Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have another one of the Limited Colors Edition guitars. This time is the Translucent Purple Standard. Now, if you didn't watch my last video with the uh, Translucent Blue one, I kind of described all of the models they did. There were six different colors made. Four of them were standards, two of them were customs, and there was 200 of these each. So the colors, once again, real quick for the standards is translucent purple, which kind of appears pink. There's kind of a mocha colored one, it's brown. There's kind of a yellowed ambered looking one. And then there's the blue one. I think the blue and the pink ones are the coolest ones personally, but the customs are where it's at. They have a trans white. So it looks white, but when you get up close, you can kind of see the wood grain, similar to on this one. And then they also have a translucent red. So these are kind of collector's guitars, but definitely really cool guitars to play. Because if you're looking for a purple guitar, you don't have much options. I don't know if I'd really consider this purple or not. It looks more like a Barney Pink kind of thing going on, but they do call him a purple dinosaur. So what makes these cool is once again, limited to 200. They're basically your traditional standard, but they have gold hardware and a unique finish with a uh, decal on the back of their headstocks here that says limited colors edition. And it's spelled the overseas way. So if you're in America, you're gonna say, hey, colors is spelled wrong. It must be fake. No, that's just how they did it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this guitar. All right, this guitar is actually in really good shape. You can see you've got some light dust and scratches on the face of the headstock here. But I would say the worst of it is like right here, there's a very small ding that kind of scuffed the uh, black holly veneer there. But besides that, but you just got some scratches. Truss rod works fine. You got your original standard truss rod cover there as well. And I really like these tuners. They're pretty cool. They've got these keystone tips to them. You also have a little bit of light edge wear along the sides here. This was definitely a lightly played guitar. The guitar's kind of right on that borderline of whether a really picky collector would accept it or not. Uh, original nut, the guitar plays just fine. You have a lightly colored rosewood fretboard. I do like that this fretboard does have a lighter color to it because I feel it uh, contrasts to the body a lot better than if it was completely dark. I think it might look a little more out of place. So I definitely was glad to see that it did have a little bit more of a lighter color and, and lots of nice wood grain to it. The frets do show some very minor wear and tear, but you know, it's in really good shape. You only have some wear on like the first couple of frets. If I can get it in the light just right, you can see there's some light impressions in the fretboard. Those are probably from the factory. You can see that small line, but those are very minimal. But they are there and I want you to be aware of them. When I got this guitar, uh, the original neck pickup ring was broken. This area to here was snapped off and missing. So I went ahead and replaced this pickup. Ring. Only the pickup oh. ring was changed. The screws are still original, the springs and the height adjustment screws are also original. The pickups are original. I just changed that out. Now this ring is a little bit smaller than the stock Gibson ring. So you can kind of see a small area between the neck and this. And uh, like if I touch this bridge pickup, you can see it moves. This one's a little more tight on it, so it doesn't, you know, move, which might actually be a good thing, but it still can be adjusted up and down. This ring came from, uh, I think it was on an 80s DiMarzio, so it's around the same age as all the other plastics, and the color difference isn't too bad. I would say it actually matches the pick guard better than the other pickup ring, but had I not told you that was replaced, looking at it, you probably wouldn't have even suspected anything. I do want to say that this bottom bridge pickup ring is also cracked right here, but it's not completely broken. You also have some more other cracks around it. So you might want to replace that one, but it's still serviceable. The original ring is included, but you know, it's kind of ugly missing that bottom spot. So I would just suggest leaving it as is because a lot of people don't realize the only part of the pickup ring you really need are these edges. This part is just for looks. You can break that off and it does nothing to the pickup ring really. Because this is where you adjust it up and down and this is what mounts it to the body. The only other non-original part to this guitar 
are there's some black strap locks on here. I would suggest replacing those to some gold ones just to, you know, complete the look. So if you're a collector, it's definitely serviceable and it just has a light wear. We'll run the light over the finish here. Obviously you've got some polishing swirls and picking marks and general handling wear, but you know, nothing too bad. A few light dings as you can see there, but Honestly, this is probably one of the cleanest ones I've seen for sale in a while. I know last week, you got a small ding there. I know last week or so there was a repaired headstock one of these and that sold for a surprisingly good price. So I think the market is ready for a nice clean example like this one to show up. You've got your original bridge. It says made in Germany, which is what it should do. They kind of switched to that look in the later 80s. This is a 1990, this is actually a very late 1990. Original tailpiece, original knobs, original pickguard. This is one really nice looking guitar. Back of the headstock, serial number 93520472, which makes this a 352nd day of the year of 1990. Nashville made, once again, limited colors edition stamp, no breaks, cracks, or repairs on this one. Well, you can see you've got some uh, light scratches, you know, handling marks once again, just for me handling it right now. But nothing to worry about. The neck is nice and clean as well. Now Gibson advertised these as a 59 profile. Uh, I still consider these to be 60s in profile. I don't think they're massive necks by any means, but I don't know, I don't quite feel that they're medium in style either. I mean, they've got a little bit extra compared to like what I think a true 60s is, but I don't know, I've never really agreed with what Gibson advertises their profiles as. Because I have it in my mind that if it's a huge neck, it's 50s. You know, I'm talking like a 57 gold top reissue giant neck. Then there's like the 60s style neck, which I feel is a nice thin profile, and then there, I consider a medium profile when it has just a little bit more than a 60s. So I would say this is a 60s to a 60s medium, which kind of lines up with Gibson's 59 profile, but that's the way I feel. The back of the guitar is in pretty good shape. You do have some buckle wear though, once I get it in the light here. So you don't have to necessarily be scared to play this one. It has all the first little nicks and dings already done for you. But, you know, if you're looking for one strictly for your collection, I know there's a lot of collectors out there that just want one of every color. I would definitely say this one fills your need for this fuchsia slash pink standard. It's got very light wear. Everything's original besides, once again, the pickup ring and easily replaceable strap buttons. Take a look around the sides of the guitar. Just, you know, very light wear. And again, replaced strap buttons there. You can see that you do have a little bit of uh, worming marks here, probably from a rivet in your jeans or something. But that, that's about it for the sides. So the limited colors edition guitars are really cool. Basically, what makes them special is their finishes. You can see through them. We'll do this one more time here. You can kind of see the wood grain underneath the finish which is kind of cool. It's got a little bit of figuring to it and you can see the wood grain. So it was definitely a really cool run of guitars. Some obviously look better than others. I think this one's actually pretty nice now that I've had it in my hands, but I would definitely call it more of a pink than purple. Take a look under black light here. Once again, great shape. You just got that little scuff right where that light is there. But overall, clean shape, a little bit of edge wear front of the body again that neck pickup ring has been replaced but it glows just about like the other plastic so if I wouldn't have told you you probably wouldn't have known but everything is glowing the way it should the knobs from the 90s don't always glow if they are in you know really well kept condition like this guitar so I still believe those are original but just light wear and tear but you can kind of see the uh the wood grain underneath a little bit better. That's probably my favorite thing about these runs. I don't think this guitar would look very good if it wasn't for the wood grain underneath to kind of break up the pinkness. Back of the headstock, you can see your serial number a little better, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs, as you can see here, which is always nice. I hate it when I find 
<laughs> mysteries in guitars. But you got a little bit of wear on the neck there. You can see a small little scuff. So, I mean, this guitar is not in mint condition. Here under black light right there, you can see where it kind of sat on a stand and it burnt the finish a little bit. That's that little line right there in the middle. But in normal lighting, you don't see that at all. Continue on down the neck, you can see there is a small little ding right there. And just, you know, light wear and tear. Here you can see the finish glows a little more because somebody's sweaty body was against it at one point in time. It's probably played a few gigs, but not too many. But once again, you don't see any of that under normal lighting. Sides are looking good. There's that rivet wear I was talking about earlier right there. But it's definitely a very nice example if you've been looking for one to add to your collection. This example weighs 9 pounds, 12.1 ounces. This guitar does come with its original case. You can see there is a kind of a sticker there at one point in time. You can see the uh, residue. But it's not too incredibly sticky. And I'm not sure what happened here. I'm guessing a dog or cat was scratching at it or something. Because I don't think this guitar has seen as many gigs as the case lets on. But it's definitely got some scuffs and something going on here. But everything works the way it should. You have one locking latch, two, three, a fourth latch there. So five in total. The handle is functioning. It's not turning green like that last one we were looking at. And the interior is this nice pink color. This is the 90s pink case. And it has the case shroud still attached, but once you take that off, you can see all the nice heel support you got. I mean, this case could probably use swept out, but... And inside here, you can see the original pickup ring. You can see what I'm talking about. It's missing that area down there. Now, I wish the seller would have still had that, because I probably could have found a way to reattach it good enough, but... Hey, at least you still have it. The cleans will be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP-1C.
Usually I don't do this overview, but after playing this guitar, I've just got to say more about this guitar. It plays amazingly. Uh, the action's nice and low, and nice and easy to play. I would say it might be a little bit too low in the upper registers for some people, so you might want to raise the bridge just a hair. But wow, the pickups in this thing are very articulate and nice and clear. Very nice, crisp, bright tones. This really is a nice sounding guitar. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you think you might be interested in this Les Paul Limited Colors Edition, now that my review is done, you can find it for sale on Reverb.com or check me out on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Troglis, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.